blue side, you have a little bit less of that, but still, I think it's been a really successful pick for the side of, of Doran. It really was, and it's telling, because Zayas in the 1v1 actually was able to you know, get those leads, but it just didn't matter enough. And I think that T1 are identifying that we need to put a player on Humble Life further down for us to have a shot. The Zix priority not going to come as a surprise. We'll see if they go back to the Caitlyn answer again. Did, of course, start with Nat last time around. That is obviously not ideal, but we'll have to see if Faker can bring out something else if that not is not the direction they're going to go in. As the Sejuani this time going to go over to Peanut as, yeah, it was banned last time. The Jax is already gone, but still, even with how good Say is, what's I feel like picking Camille this early in a draft, even if it could with Ziggs, is a really big risk. Yeah, it means the Sejuani also a really big denial because Sejuani Camille so strong. Yeah. But I feel like T1 are now sort of leaving it into a composition where their goal will be to kill this Smolder. The Camille set up, the Ziggs to follow up, you have the resets on this Tristana. So anything that Viper ends up picking in this draft needs to bear in mind there's a lot of dive threat already, and that's before even locking in the support and jungle, who I assume is going to uh, extenuate that one more. I'm like Esports, if they want to pick for Doran, now is kind of the time to get that in before we go to the next ban phase. It looks like that is what they're going to do. Uh, they were toying with the Rector and they go for the Xanti instead. Um, this is the Rel. You know, a another option, I think it's something that Delight has gone back into many a time, just to really bolster the engage and provide follow-up after Sejuani throws it all. Imagine Caria, if this gets locked in, is going to go towards the Alistair. And then the question becomes, what do they want to go in the jungle? As mentioned, there is still the flex potential of the Smolder and the Talia ban, but Smolder, AD Carry, I think we've seen like Aiming played it once, I think, a while back, and it just didn't really feel like it had the same impact. That's a no-brainer. What is owner going oh. to bring here? That is even more dive, but that champion has not been doing too hot in the LCK recently. Zyra is still open, but Zyra with a dive composition, it just doesn't feel that good. It doesn't fit, and I think you're all in already. At this point of the draft, you know what your comp needs to do into Hunt Life Esports. Point the idea of the Nidalee, so doesn't fit as well in with the dive, but obviously can establish a lot of pressure now. HLE, they're gonna go for this oh, yeah. in the bot lane, and they're gonna try and pick a really strong mid jungle 2v2 with the Yone Sejuani, and it being Zekka's Yone as well. If they find an advantage in the mid, mid bleeds in a jungle, maybe they can defang this Nidalee. And there is exactly one team where you can see Nidalee Tristana and go, oh, they're winning the mid-jungle 2v2. Uh, that team is waiting in the finals. <laughs> For any other team, that's that doesn't feel that strong. Ideally, even though in theory it makes sense, you get Pryo, you play from there. Tristana's Pryo have been substantially nerfed. Faker has not looked great on Tristana mid. On top at the moment. But let's see how game number two goes as we hop into the rim right now. Here we go, game number two already beginning as so are the emotes and a bit of dancing from the light. Some bodyguarding there from Carrier, making sure Faker doesn't have any issues in the early game. I do feel like, I mean, it's typical with the Nidalee, but this game might feel really snowball-y. Uh, as Nidalee often does, but also the two carry composition for HLE. If Zekka or Viper fall behind, getting as many grubs as possible when you're the team with Tristana and, and Zix, that's that's really a classic. And I think Humble Life also make the correct call not to try and contest this given the experience disadvantage they're looking at. As the TP is going to come through here, that's Zeus. And I think that's fine. You, you're not going to get Dove as a Camille. Smolders doesn't have the damage yet. But you sort of lean into territory of cross mapping, and Ziggs always wins cross map scenarios because of the pace at which he takes turrets. So this is not a setup I think Honor Life Esports wants to go into, uh, and T1 really are setting the pace of this game so far. Even though obviously goal is still very close, it feels like HLE are kind of just doing what they can on the other side. Now they are trying to lean towards Zayas. If they bring four members, that's when it becomes diveable, and it's down to how Zayas well, uses those. they have three, and there's the stun already. Zayas finally going to get that ult off, and Delight does tank out the turret. That's another turret oh. shot going into Viper, chunking him in half. Uh, Zayas will survive against three. Can he survive against four? The other question, as the stun comes in, lines it up for Zekka, and finally they're able to take out Zayas in the bottom lane. First blood to Amelie of Esports. That's still a big investment, though, and Faker is going to be able to get a big shove going. We'll see. 
Diving at Cassante is always very, very tough. Can Doran defend here? Yeah, he's pretty tanky, but there's the unstoppable taken away, and Carrier thinking about going up in. Down. He is not level six himself just yet, but the sun comes in, and the Ziggs bomb, the all out, goes in on Taguma as he survives for quite a long period of time. Owner nearly dies, but. Because again, I do think that this is a situation that T1 should be in and also needs to be in for the composition to really work as the dragon is going to get started. Again, I do think the grubs are a lot more important than specifically the first dragon. But T1 still looking to contest. Last time, Zeka single-handedly stopped them. This time, T1 going to bring a couple more people into the fray. Yeah, definitely a different look this time around. Karia still level 5. Kind of awkward for him. He wants to get that engage going. Delight level 6 himself looking for the Magnet Storm angle. See if he can hit it. As uh, some Zix poke does come in, but they will commit to this one. There's the big bomb onto the back line, but now they're trying to go forward. The spike comes in from Peanut. They get the Chemtech Drake. Cloud uh, Drake is up next, and Humble Life Esports say, "Nope, we're we're done with this fight. We got the Drake, and we are out." I think they should just give up now. T1 move towards mid. You could actually potentially take the tower. There's no one there to defend it, and it's Zig's Trist. So, who cares about the dragon? They are going to put the TP in. Maybe the minion wave is a bit too small. They got another one. And, I mean, they have three grubs already. This might just go down. Demolish as well. If Look nobody comes in and stops this. Look at the lights. He's on his way, but I don't think he's going to be in time. I mean, maybe his threat will be enough to push them off. They do back away. Meanwhile, owner's getting more grubs on the map, so he should be able to get some. And the thing is, whether or not they take the tower isn't the most relevant thing, because when you get it that low, it's a satchel away, right? An auto and a satchel from the Ziggs will take it. And now, for the rest of the game, HLE has to play super defense on the mid-tier one, or it will just go down. Do want to give credit to HLE for getting an early game Dragon, uh, deflecting an attempt to engage from T1, and also making sure that they still get in these side lane plates, right? T1, yes, the grubs are big, but they're not really able to uh. build a giant lead when it comes to uh, the gold as Guma ends up having the flash. Zeka found him with the ult. Guys, look really? at up. Uh, that was really? a zoning ult. Zoning the ult. zoning ult. ult. He's pushing him off the turret so he's trying to make it. a point off. But no, he knows he's going to get the turret. He wants the turret. <laughs> he's he going to get it. it. There you go. Yeah, nice timing on the satchel. Up. And there it is, the first turret blood going over Beautiful. to the Ziggs team that's ahead. Makes sense for Ziggs as well. It's pretty good. I don't but think he can get a second one. I know yeah. he loves turrets, but this might be a bit, a bit of a stretch. So. There's a second one in mid. Hey, but what about the mid one? one right. yeah, yeah, mid one, I think. As right now, we do see T1 setting up shop around this dragon. Going to be hard to approach these choke points with the traps, with the vision denial, and with the Ziggs being there, and both mid and bot lane being shoved in. Yeah, it's going to be a very different feel playing the Ziggs from behind versus from ahead. I think Gumo is doing his best to poke. He had a lot of damage in game one, but now, as you mentioned, Chronicler, you can just kind of set up mines, satchels, ways to prevent entries as it's Ocean Soul that is coming in here for game number two. So no Infernal, no X tech and no Mountain. Those are the other options. Zekka still trying to exert some pressure here on the map, but it will be the Dragon over to T1. And there's mid tower god. It was he got it. Oh, yeah, I mean, didn't get the plates for it, but yeah. not so much this time around. It, Errol is still up, and it's going to get taken by T1. It looked yeah. like it did feel like T1. You know, even from behind, they were kind of like going in, going out, going in. It wasn't the cleanest calls or communication, coordination, whatever you want to call it, from their side, from behind. But from ahead, Humble Life Esports, they haven't made any oversteps. You know, they're they're just sitting back. They have a smolder, and they say, "Well, we're behind. We don't really want to fight right now, so." Just give you the Drake and just continue farming. And that's the thing, it's always contextual. T1 ahead, it's about 2,000 after that tower went down, but how far ahead do you need to be when you're playing into the Smolder? You have tools to deal with him, even when he gets ahead, but we've well, seen Smolders even itemize things like a Zonia. Especially once he hits a second item and from there on out. But for T1, both Zayas and Faker are going to shred through Doran. Like, Doran is going to have a tough time actually maintaining any level of prio as. We do have uh, Delight running into the Camille and not really enjoying his time, but there's a lot more resources on the way. TPs are available. Yeah, they're trying to get something here on the top side of the map, but this is uh, kind of uh, half-hearted as now the Ziggs bomb comes over the top. Say who's looking to take out Delight. He will not be able to. That's a kill, but look at bottom lane. This is really where most of the action is happening in terms of turrets going down. They're going to take the mid-inner, and then they'll back away, but utilizing that Rift Herald to eat. Nice degree. And this is a problem. You commit so heavily to the top side of the map, and now Ziggs Tristana looking mid. I don't think you dive in Alistair, but it, uh, yeah, they'll just take the tower. Meanwhile, TP's coming in. Viper doesn't exist anymore. It's not dead, but 
yeah, he, he needs to back. Meanwhile, this top turret will go down. So at least Hummelife did get that. But T1 really trying to exert a lot of map pressure with this comp. I'm not sure if it was uh, the locker that ended up being the difference maker, but going for the flash queue there is a wow. area. This is uh, Alistair. I mean, it's going to take a long time to kill him. And can they actually do it? I, I don't really believe just yet. But now trying to bait the fight. Here comes Camille. That's a miss on the hook shot. Trying to predict the pullback. And that's not going to work. Azeka eventually just pulls back himself. Now he's going to flash over the wall. And they get away scot free. Even Blast Cone helping them out. Getting the kill. You know, Carrier getting caught obviously not ideal. But it, it's just so many misfires. Zayas completely whips uh, the hook shot in this situation. Uh, uh -oh. Zayas caught out again. Here we go again. And Zeka's really beginning to take over the map with the help of some of his friends. The stun comes in. And that is the combo of Yone and Sejuani. And they are just abusing those side lanes right now. As Mob will come down, the Smolder wave clear it works a little bit. But it will not stop Ziggs. They take out the inner, does T1. Now Hamalai Esports threatening from top river. It's been disastrous for T1. They're still ahead. They're still getting structures, but they keep so unnecessary. You know, yes, Zayas, they're trading for you in these situations. They are getting the dragon, but it just feels like they're giving away so much that is unnecessary. And it really starts to make me feel concerned. You're also, you're not getting drakes that are that relevant. As you saw T1, when Zayas was getting dove or uh, killed there by three people. Turret was already gone, obviously. Has a lot of ways to get this Yone going. I do like that T1 are still trying to pressure the map. They're still trying to take out as many side turrets as possible. Even Viper going to call down Mom just to clear that wave. And stay safe up there. And continue to try to delay. But oh no, Guma is totally caught as there's the flash. And he will get away with the satchel. But that was pretty scary for a moment. And that's a big cooldown gone, is, is just getting an engage onto Zekka as they try to get the door in. Yeah, I mean, at least Faker's going to do the damage, but actually it's carry on a bit of a uh, rough spot. He's going to have to flash away, and Doran holds on to his flash. So all things considered, not like Esports not too bothered. This is right before the Drake and maybe some pressure onto the Baron that you guys were talking about, but still a bit early, and they haven't totally pushed away Doran and DSTP. So, not going to matter all too much just yet. TP is going to come in. We'll see if Humble Life wants to contest. They also have a good amount of Baron damage with the burn with the Yone. So, oh, if to want to be careful, Delight, he is looking. A lot of Zayas damage as well. Yeah. Uh, well, if they get everybody up there as, yeah, no hookshot just yet. And there's Zeka over the wall. And now the Magnet Storm with the hookshot buffered to try to get away. And it ults as well as we got a little skirmish on the right side coming in. Faker trying to flash on in, but it will be disengaged. Zeus has to back away. Here comes Owner. There's a wave. Zeus can flank with a TP once he recalls. They're playing it slow. They definitely are. How many Sports are backed up against the wall? We'll see if T1 can zone them and do some As TP. No Zekka damage. ult. No Delight ult. Yeah, that's a lot gone. And how about he sports again? They have nowhere to go as Doran trying to throw himself in there. But now Delight's got a frontline and he's not very tanky. How about he sports are just running the opposite way as he has to flash a spear. T1 still on the chase, but they're not quite fast enough. I mean, how about he sports are just running away from them really fast. And T1 are not going to find the engage. And I think T1 honestly fumbled this. Delight. Won't even lives, go yeah. down. Gets the shield for the dismount. T1, they, they had this on a flank TP. And they all moved to his side so he wasn't isolated. But as a result, HLE just ran down and got out. And now they're all looking towards the Baron. But they know full HP. He's there. They know. Uh, TPs are available as well, although Delight isn't there just yet. Second doesn't have his ultimate. Maybe this is the window. It's 27 minutes in. That's a bit of damage from Mom. But yeah, Peanut is in the pit. They have not found a way to zone him away. And now we have the TP coming on in. The all out on to Karia. And Peanut will not be denied access. As it is just a flip. It goes to Owner. But the health bars are so low on the side of T1. Owner is just running away. Baker's running away. Zayus is isolated. Karia can't quite walk his way out of this one. The Baron does go the way of T1, and actually it's only just the one kill on Azaz for now. It's a heist! They got the Baron! They did. It looks like Karia might eventually go down. Will go down for sure. Uh, and this this buys time for HLE. You know, if they chase down... Uh, I, I guess they gave up, because you can re uh, Wow, Doran might just die here. Okay. The Koenig! The Koenig! He is Cassante. He's Cassante. Okay, but the, the recall from Carrier taking the Dragon, this is going to slow down the Baron of T1, but they still have the buff. That's the main thing with the Tristana Ziggs. 
They really need to get mileage out of it. It's not enough just to get a couple of towers. The, br the base needs to be broken. You need an inhib tower at least. Really do. And the inhib... I mean, it's just so hard to approach. You have the small that firing these Qs out, denying the waves, and look at how HLE are positioned. They are actually confident to look for a fight if the opportunity arises. Yeah. I like these words. Well, that Ziggs bomb didn't do much. And, uh, you know, get some shields, you get the locket. Excellent value into the Ziggs, by the way. So, just gonna eat that Inferno bomb. And, uh, yeah, this Baron play is not really doing much at the end of the day. It is about 1,200 gold in the power play. Another looking for owner. Oh, he is caught out, and there's nowhere for him to go. They get carried as well in the Magnet Storm. This is just kind of hanging out at the end of the Baron push, and that will be a double kill now for Viper. Yeah, and uh, you know, you're, you're talking about the stuff that Viper has used. I feel like we haven't really seen a coordinated fight from T1 where they really target in onto the Smolder. And here comes Smolder. Viper just flapping over the wall, and there's that poke damage coming in. Locket gonna help against that, but now Peanut's in a bit of trouble. He's got a flash away. TP gonna be forced from both of them. Zekka gonna hold on to his, though, and he will not be TPing into this fight. As I say that, he TPs into the fight. As now, trying to get on top of a Camille, that's not gonna work out. Zekka not gonna hit any engage, but actually Doran oh! is gonna hold out Goomba, but Keria is gonna get the peel on that back line. Doran in a bit of trouble, but so is Keria. Who will go down first? The answer is the cow, as Keria does go down. Zekka going forward, Zeus desperately trying to find the angle. Very low health bars, as in goes Zeus, but there's no follow-up as some bombs are thrown in, but Zekka finally! The Faker. for Faker, he's gonna get in, he's gonna get out, and it's just gonna be Doran super low on HP once again, eats a spear, and Zeus looking for more as the Mega Bomb comes in! They're gonna take down the Rel, and how many Beastports are left just running away from the fight? These fights are insane! T1, they're gonna keep going! Can they go for the push? Soul is on the table. Super close, but able to find the advantage just when it felt like the Smolder was becoming unstoppable. They find a winner, but now TP coming in. They will be challenged. Faker, I'm not sure you can stay in the pit against Viper. I mean, at the end of the day, Faker doesn't die, and it's just one Ocean Soul. T1 are taking the Baron right now. I mean, they don't really care about this Ocean. Yeah, they denied the Ocean Soul, but T1 getting the Baron, at this point in the game, and they have a lead, I think we might begin to see some of those fights that actually look... Well, they got some extra plates, and they've gotten some other objectives, as Doran is Owner. extremely tanky, but Owner's in a lot of trouble. He wills on you, Zin. Mom doesn't do much, but Owner's still gonna be caught by the Yone. Viper in a kind of an awkward spot, but he's able to flap away, and he gets some peeling, and now Zeus is really just uh, in a rough spot here as well. Zekka does have his GA, but down goes Zeus. And how will IV Sports they find the fight? They're looking for more! Trying to find Guma, trying to find Faker and carry up the two carries here on the side of T1. They go in on the carry. Look at the damage from Faker, it is huge! As there's a couple of kills already for the Tristana! Faker just standing and firing and no, taking no. everyone out! He gets a triple! He oh. gets no, so it's the kill of the Sage! But it is a massive fight to the side of T1 as they overstep and Faker picks up a Quadra. Faker, the player who has struggled throughout this season, comes up huge. The movement's perfect. He gets the damage off and he turns around the fight. They're going to look for the end. Owner's just bait, baby. They don't need to. Nidalee ends up going down. But as we can see, as much damage as Zekka and Viper can do, that doesn't matter if... You can't get on top of this six and can't get on top of this uh, of this of this Tristana. And it's over. There's nothing they can do. The Nexus. You see that the light is just desperation. But this late in the game, you give up a fight like that, T Wolf will run away with the game. And we've got a series on our hands already. One to one.